Hi, we're Maren and Angela of Homeschool Unrefined. Over the past 25 years, we've been friends, teachers, homeschool parents, and podcasters together. With our master's degree and 20 years combined homeschooling, we are here to rethink homeschooling, learning, and education with an inclusive and authentic lens. At Homeschool Unrefined, we prioritize things like giving yourselves credit, building strong connections, respectful parenting, interest-led playing and learning, learning differences, mental health, self-care, listening to and elevating LGBTQ plus and BIPOC voices. We are here to encourage and support you, whether you're a new homeschooler, a veteran, you love curriculum, you're an unschooler, whether all of your kids are at home or all of your kids are in school or somewhere in between, wherever you are on your journey, we're the voice in your head telling you you're doing great and so are your kids. This is episode 195, Sparking Inspiration with Josh Davidson. We are going to talk about creative writing and inspiring our children, and then we'll end like we always do with our LTWs are loving this week. Yes. And we wanted to give you a quick reminder that a few we have a few new exciting updates to our podcast this year. Number one, we are including transcripts with all of our episodes. So if you look at the show notes, you're going to see transcripts. So you can check through everything we've said. And if you want to go back and get some of the details of what we talked about, find it there. Yes. And those are in your right in your podcast app. We also have them on our website. Yes, which is, yep, yep. Yep. So that's at homeschoolunderfined.com slash episodes. So it'll be right in there. And then also we are also publishing our podcast episodes in video this season. And so you can go to YouTube and find our channel, Homeschool Unrefined. And we even have a playlist specifically for the fall 2022 season. And we have our videos. You're going to see us on screen recording our episodes. Yeah. So that's very exciting. If you prefer that method, you can get that there. Okay. So we are starting something new this season where we are bringing you three new sponsors for the entire fall season. We were very intentional about who we chose for sponsors. We appreciate you taking the time to learn about them because we think they're really good companies. Also, they're giving discount codes. So you want to listen for those. We are so happy to work hard on this podcast and we appreciate the financial support in making it happen. Here at Homeschool Unrefined, you know we're all about making your life easier. That's why we are excited to introduce you to Night Zookeeper. Is your child a reluctant writer? Do they struggle with reading? If your answer to either of these questions is yes, then Night Zookeeper may be just what you're looking for. Night Zookeeper is an online learning program for children ages 6 to 12 years old that uses a gamified and creative approach to help keep kids engaged and focus on developing awesome reading and writing skills all while having fun at the same time. Some of the features we love included include the educational games, the personalized feedback on writing from real tutors, and the super safe community pages where children can work with each other and learn together. If Night Zookeeper sounds like the perfect learning program for your child, you can try it for free by clicking on the link in the show notes. When you when you register, you'll get a seven day risk free trial as well as a huge fifty percent off annual subscription. That's a great deal, if you ask me. I always had the toughest time finding a curriculum that was aligned with our values. Enter Blossom and Root. Blossom and Root is a nature focused secular homeschool curriculum focusing on creativity, science, nature, literature, and the arts. Blossom and Root has been gently encouraging and supporting homeschool families around the globe since 2016. Blossom and Root currently offers curricula for pre-K through fifth grade with new levels being added in the future. Additionally, a three volume inclusive US history curriculum told from a variety of viewpoints is currently in development. As of August, 2022, volume one is available for purchase and volume two is available on presale. All profits from this history curriculum, A River of Voices, will be used to support storytellers and artists from historically excluded communities. You can find samples, scope and sequences, and information about each of their levels online at BlossomAndRoot.com. You can also find them on Instagram at BlossomAndRoot. BlossomAndRoot has created a special discount for our listeners. Use the code HSUnrefined15 at checkout 
for 15% off your purchase. Our kids have taken so many different old school classes over the years, which is why partnering with them was a no brainer. We know that kids love to learn. Kids who love to learn don't just prepare for the future, they create it. That's why OutSchool has reimagined online learning to empower kids and teens to expand their creativity, wonder, and knowledge. Empathetic, passionate teachers encourage learners ages 3 to 18 to explore their interests, connect with diverse peers from around the world, and take an active role in leading their learning. OutSchool has created a world filled with endless possibilities for every schooling journey. Explore over 140,000 fun and flexible live online classes to find the right fit for you and your family. And join us as we set learning free. Sign up today at outschooler.me slash homeschool unrefined and get up to 20% off your first class when you enroll with the code unrefined. We are excited for our main topic today, which is sparking inspiration and creativity with Josh Davidson. Josh Davidson is the creator and managing director of Night Zookeeper, a magical, inspirational brand where children discover and create imaginative animals. These animals join an interactive world and can feature in his storybooks, on, a, on an animated series on Spy Kids, in a collectible card game, and an online learning program that helps children with reading and writing and unlocks their creativity. Josh is a passionate public speaker on games, education, and creativity. He has spoken at many international conferences. Additionally, he has been interviewed across BBC stations in the United Kingdom. Please enjoy our conversation with Josh. I want to invite our guest, Josh, from the Night Zookeeper here today. Thank you so much for being with us, Josh. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm wondering if you could just tell us, just start out by telling us a little bit about yourself and just your background. Absolutely. So yes, so I'm Josh. I'm the author of the Night Zookeeper storybook series and the creator of nightzookeeper.com which is a website based on the, the theme, if you like, of the Night Zookeeper story, but that is an interactive website where children are inspired to fall in love with writing and get lots of reading practice. And we also help with grammar and spelling, et cetera, to sort of really convert the most reluctant, you know, there's a few of them out there, the most reluctant there. of young readers and writers into the authors of tomorrow. I just made up that line, but it sounds good. The authors Ooh, of I... tomorrow. Yeah. I really love that. I really love that. And I love that you have that vision. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. But at first, yeah. I want to ask you, like, how did you come up with this idea of the night zookeeper? It just, it sounds like the ideal thing for a reluctant reader or writer. And I'm wondering what, what brought you here? What, what made you create it? Sure. So, I mean, obviously with all things in life, there's a, there's an element of serendipity. I yes. had so during my studies, I traveled to Australia. So as you say, I'm based in the UK, but I did an exchange in Australia, in mm. Melbourne. And I heard whilst I was there that their zoo was open at nighttime. And obviously now I think zoos you know, across the world, some of the zoos are open. Like there's a night zoo in Singapore and London oh, cool. Zoo has zoo late. So there's a, this is a thing. Oh, fun. But at the time, I didn't know anything about it. And right. being a strange young man, hearing about a night zoo, I... So immediately was my head was filled with time traveling elephants and <laughs> buying giraffes that could turn invisible. And so cool. um, I had a little notebook and I started to write my story about this strange zoo and the sort of things that you would encounter there. Right, right. But I finished my, I, I was doing my, my fine art degree at the time. I then did a oh, master's okay. in digital art. And mm. one of the modules that I was studying was called collaborative practices. And it was about using the internet to collaborate with others. So, you know, kind of like we're, we're doing now, we're, right, we're yeah, talking yeah. over the, the, the magical power of the internet. And <laughs> it was magic. all the different things that you could use the internet for to collaborate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, so in trying to work out what I was going to do as part of my studies into that module, I was flicking through my notepad of ideas and I came across my short story that I'd written about the night zoo. And I realized that although my story was okay, what was really lovely about the story was that it was a question, fundamentally, mm. of what magical animals could exist in a zoo right, at nighttime. Right. 
and not only was I as an author you know or a writer or whatever I was inspired mm-hmm. to write something but I was pretty sure that other people would be just to tell them you know that that power of the night right it's kind of it always been since my childhood I think it's a, it's a, it's a very human thing that things can exist in nighttime all the way back to the teddy bear picnic the famous right? teddy bear picnic oh yes yes night. yes no, no yeah, but the Love thing is gonna happen and so yeah I, I turned this short story into a collaborative project which was based around a website where anybody could log on and create new magical animals that would live in my fictional night zoo and my best friend Paul Hudson, who is my co-founder in Night Zookeeper, was a primary school teacher. And he said, Josh, I want to do this with my kids in class. And yes. I said, that sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. So he convinced his head teacher to invite me in. So I came in as an artist and uh, we ran this project where we, t- I, you know, I, I lied to children which I've now made a professional career. <laughs> and I told them that I was a night zookeeper. And oh, nice. I live in a magical night zoo. And I looked after these spying giraffes and time traveling elephants. But the, the night zoo needed more animals. And we were wondering whether these, you know, these kids wanted to come up with some animals to live in the zoo. And boy, did they. They absolutely <laughs> went for it. And it simultaneously showed me just uncreative I am. <laughs> um, because I had created yeah. a giraffe that could turn invisible, whereas they had created a dragon fish crossed with a ham sandwich. You know, okay. like they, they they took things to this this that's, level that of, that's of creativity that was like, okay, I, I, yeah, I, I bow down before thee, and and yeah, that's where we are now, like with a so website cool. that's basically that idea, that initial sort of engaging assembly, if you like, where you tell kids this is what we're going to do through through digital media and then let them go for it. And you know, yeah. it's doing a pretty much a massive disservice to the website to say that that's what it does because it's huge. And you know, we're throwing everything at the kitchen sink at getting kids to fall in love with reading and writing. But at this, at the very heart of it, it's that it's this story that, and the power of storytelling and yes. how that can sort of spark an individual child's imagination and how you yep. can then channel that imagination into creative output like writing. I love that because I do think when we when we approach learning as <laughs> we we have to do this, you have to get to this level, then our kids often get get to that level and maybe that's it. Maybe that's all they do, or maybe they even struggle to get to this certain level. But when you come in as a night zookeeper, you're like, I want you to think of, imagine these animals, you know, the limit, there's no limit. They go, they go everywhere with that. Absolutely. You can see the brains, like you can see the sparks flying. And what's wonderful is it's such a unifier for all the kids, because you've got kids of all different ability levels, some of them some engaged in the activity, some, some not, some with, you know, have been spending the morning reading about how the human eye works and others that have been reading about animals on a farm, yep. you know, but you put them together and they've all gonna, they're all going to express themselves. They're all going to create something that is can, using their, their brain in a really interesting way. As I mentioned, like they were destroying me, but That's then they amazing. can all relate to each other. Yep. Like of course we they were. They were, in, yeah. Kids, 12 year old kids talking to six year old kids about their animals. Mm-hmm. Like, That's Wonderful. So, so we see this with siblings in homeschool, so that you get the older kid and the younger kids, some of the playing together for and yeah, learning yeah, yeah. And playing together. And it's it's a wonderful way to to, to sort of to, to sort of in a way sort of forget about some of those yeah. levels that we try and think about. Yes. And, and because there's something so hu- it's just human. That's what it it's is. Ultimately, human. it's about being human and yes. using our, you know gifts that we've been given and seeing how where we can take them exactly and so that's you kind of answered this question which is why do you think creative writing is a good way to to start at such a young age you're talking about very young kids here so I mean I think you kind of answered that but if there's anything else you want to add why do you think it's good to start creative writing at such a young age oh well yeah I mean I think that like with any anything that's innately human as a skill mm. storytelling is the the, the you know the de facto right? human skill yes. you know, it's, it's right at the core of what we do it and really how is. we survive in this world and yeah writing is is an extension of that but what the tools that we've built on my zookeeper you know it, of course you remind it, the most common scenario you get with kids is that they're their brains run a million miles ahead of their their technical ability. That is so true. Yes. 
imagining and their thinking and, and getting those thoughts and down and sort of structuring them is is a huge challenge but it is like zookeeper as a platform is is built to scaffold that process so you know you're not giving kids a blank piece of paper and saying tell me everything about this creature you've invented the the way that it unfolds is you know you ask to draw the creature yep. that you're imagining then you're asked what its name is then you are yes. asked maybe it's what, where does it live or what does it eat or does it have any special abilities and each question is you know almost delivered like a a chat between yourself and the right, animals right, right. the animals kind of learning about themselves and this means that it never feels to the kid like a daunting thing it never feels Absolutely. like something that they can't do and and so from the youngest yes. ages they're they're constantly having this interaction with the program but they're also having it with themselves and anyone that's doing it with them I mean that's the other thing about yes. this particular experience like it's a lovely way for a parent to engage with their child or as I mentioned like an older sibling to engage with the younger mm. sibling because yeah. suddenly you know you're drawing each ideas out of each other and you're realizing like oh where did, where did you think of that like where did that idea come from but like oh maybe you must have heard you know grandpa say something about this the other day so right. you're bringing that into it and it's oh this yes. is really interesting where, where your mind works because that's where you know creativity is at the core of how our brains work I think that is so you are so right about that and I love that you're scaffolding it like that or and also just making maybe the most challenging parts very small like do this right. one little thing that's challenging and yeah. actually it's so motivating because it's not like do this one little thing that's challenging and you don't get any reward from it no right. you do this one little challenging thing and then it, it it adds to your you know this you know this world that you're creating you're and it feels and so mind, good it, it gives you a, it, yeah so in terms of that as well like we do this scaffolding process not just for the younger kids but for the older kids as well yep, because you do absolutely. find that you get a lot of older kids who have been turned off writing they don't like yes it. they don't want to do it yeah. It feels hard. It's one of the few subjects, actually, that we've really struggled really to sort of gamify and make feel like it's fun. But what Naizuki does by doing this sort of building up of questions and answers is at the end of that process, if you're an older kid, we show you what you've done. Like okay. We show you. Ooh, like, I like wow, that. I just wrote all of that without realizing it. Like, here's a big, uh, I'm doing it visually, of course, no one can see. But I've got a big, <laughs> I see it. Um, it's really big. Know, an <laughs> an yeah. elephant sized head of writing. Yes. on the page and the kids like even if it's just right at the back of their subconscious yeah, they're like yeah, yeah I can do that now mm -hmm. so whenever they're yep. you know they, they see other pieces of people's writing if they've struggled with writing stamina because they, they typically write a couple of sentences and then they just, they just don't want to write anymore right. they're, they're bored they're struggling it's hard like a part of it is like with everything in life is you feel that you can do it once you've done it and we're saying hey you know what you've done this here it is. And the next time they come, they might not need, the older kids might not need that scaffolding approach. They might want to jump straight into that work classic kind of word processor setting because they feel like they can do it now. Um, yeah, you're going to have that writing stamina. But yeah, we always provide that as a, yeah, as a realization for the kids ultimately that they are writers. That is so great because it just builds that self-confidence and their identity as you know, a lot of times our kids don't even can't even identify as a writer, even though they certainly have all the ideas, but we just need, you know, maybe just need a few tools yeah. and then it can go, you know, wherever, where, you know, they have freedom to do so many things with just a few things. So Absolutely. it's so hard though. It, so many of us, especially homeschool parents are feeling frustrated about reading and writing, to be honest. Right. I mean, it just, it feels like sometimes it feels like we're slogging through things. It feels like we're requiring things more than enjoying things. And so what are your tips for, at, for us, <laughs> for us parents at home who are like feeling frustrated right now? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a difficult position to be in because kids can be stubborn. And, yeah. you know, once they've made up their mind about a subject or an area that, that they're like, okay, no, I, I don't do that. I, that's yeah. not, you, know, you know, I don't like that. Or that, you know, even to the point, you know, you have kids crying when they're putting yep. in front of a piece of paper that they want to write, like it, it's there. heartbreaking. And yeah. they've got to mm -hmm. that point in their brain where they're like, this is something I can't do. Yes. And I guess that's the first thing to realize is that ultimately this, this is a, a feeling that's mm -hmm. inside them that mm -hmm. needs to be worked through needs to be worked out and of course i would say this but no two is a really good way of doing that because it's a, yeah. it's a game 
and yeah, I don't, you know, yeah. whether it's Night Zookeeper or something else, right. you need to find a game which has a different element to it than pure writing. And you need to show right. the child that the writing part, the reading part of the writing part of that game is something that they can do because they're not focused on it. They're not thinking, this is what I'm doing right, right. now. I'm writing. They're thinking, right, right, right. I need to, you know, I need to beat my parents at this board game, which involves a bit of writing or reading, or I need to be yeah, my kid, you know, yeah. or, or I want to create something really beautiful as a painting for my 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 mum's fridge. But I'm but then mum's asked me to give a title for it and maybe like just write down a few things so I, she can read it, read about what's yeah. in this castle. It's just yeah, they they need to, they're going to need a breakthrough moment. I guess that's for what sure. I would say. Like, I yes. don't think you're going to have success, you know looking at the traditional ways of doing this right you know, right in the classic sort of systems that exist yeah yeah recognizing it's, made up the it, mind and adapting the approach i love that yeah that's so true it seems like a lot of times we we definitely homeschool parents us we focus on the semantics and the the actual like details of the I don't know, might be punctuation or handwriting right. or capital letters, right. things like that, that yep. we're, I mean, we can really focus on those things. And then it gets, it becomes more about that rather than, and what, what I hear you saying is our, the kids, our kids' strengths are often in their ideas, right? in their imagination, in the possibilities, in the unreal, <laughs> you know, this is, this whole, they, you know, there can be a whole world. That's where their strengths mm -hmm. lie. I feel like, and I feel like with your program, there's so much like we, you build on the strengths right. and the other stuff kind of comes along yeah, with it, I think so. but it's not the focus always. It's not no. like the thing they have to do. Exactly. Right. I think, I think yeah. a lot of it is if we're talking about, you know, upskilling, but if mm -hmm. you have a child that, you know, will write, but writes terribly yeah. and hates being corralled into doing the kind of the classic practice mm. and, and, and editing and redrafting and all. Right. There are elements within Night Zookeeper that help with that as well. So yes. first of all, we're trying to get them to write lots. Then yep. anything that they're writing as part of this game is coming through to a tutor. So this isn't you. This isn't mm -hmm. the parent and the child relationship. If there's stress building up here, then take that stress away, you know, by yeah. giving this piece of work to, uh, you know, a, a face on the screen, it could be my face, but probably yeah, not yeah, yeah. one of our, our tutoring <laughs> team, but their tutoring team's face mm -hmm. is going to be coming back on that piece of writing that your, your child has put together. Okay. And they're going to know, they're going to see the strengths in it, but they're also going to see the weaknesses and they're yeah, going to yeah, craft yeah. a comment that will nudge as, as enthusiastically as possible your child towards better practices with the writing. Wow. So that is the that is the key because worst of all, it matters. In some to some children, it matters yeah, that this yeah. is somebody who cares that's not their parents. This is someone else in the exactly. world. Exactly. Like that yes. can make a massive just a, 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 a switch of, you know, yep. if your kids in a traditional school system, even like sometimes it's the teacher and the parent kind of yes. don't count anymore. But there's right. someone else out there who's saying, this is good. You know, this is good. Yes. And you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel quite good about that. Then. I feel quite good yeah. that I think it's good. Oh, but they've said I can improve it if I just check right. that spelling for that bit, or or maybe I learn, remember to start using a few more paragraphs. I can do that because I know what a paragraph is because I just watched a video of it on that previous thing that Natsukeeper sent me. Yeah. And then I'm gonna and, and those kind of skill based, you know, real sort of core yeah, yeah, curriculum yeah. points that every yeah. young writer has to learn. I mean, it's it, it comes back to like reading ultimately. Like you just mm -hmm. need your kids to read. Right? Mm -hmm, I mean, fundamentally, mm -hmm. yep. kids will learn to read if they're reading. Uh, the right, more they right. read, the better at reading they're, they're going to get. Right, you know, exactly. If, you, if your kid picks up a soccer magazine like, and they're reading, great. Right. Reading. The more they enjoy reading, the more they're going to read, the, the more, more they're they going to learn to read. <laughs> exactly. And it's exactly yep. the same with writing. Exactly. The more, write, yep. the more they're going to enjoy writing, the more they're going to get over any in a turmoil they have about writing and then they're going to all those other things you're worried about all those other things curriculums tell you to worry about they will they will come they yes. will come because you're in the same way that when you read and you read and you read you pick up the the words and the skills that you need to yep. to, to go to new places with, with books i love that you mentioned that there's this personal 
tutor or a feed a personal feedback that are that every child gets when they when they use night zookeeper because I do you're right like it's so good to have somebody else besides your parent or your teacher work with you sometimes especially in writing I think because it is so personal and it almost feels a little vulnerable even if it's even if it is about an an animal that doesn't really exist it's something that's been in your mind and you know and to have your parent maybe give a little criticism of that can really be tough for a child and so even just a little encouragement from someone else you know that's a little bit removed but also very encouraging Mm -hmm. it's very encouraging yes it seems it seems like the best uh situation (laughs) one other there's one other even better scenario that happens Mm. on night zookeeper we encourage the kids to comment on other kids right Oh, that's awesome. So they and we've trained them up, you know, through the system to leave positive but constructive comments on other kids' writing. And it all goes through okay. the tutor. So everything gets, you know, moderated and checked. And then then if it's a nice constructive comment, it will appear on your kid's writing from wow. another student. And that, you know, I'm I'm yet to meet a kid who hasn't loved that, actually. Like the the there's you know, there's that and kids are the best at being sensitive. Like adults, like we we try and be sensitive to our to kids, right? But kids just kind of get other kids. They kind of know right. that they're all kind of in it together. And yeah, yeah. they say it, they phrase it so nicely, like, oh, I loved this piece. It was amazing. I, I'm gonna dream about this story you wrote tonight. <laughs> oh. Just so you know, I think you've missed a full stop at the end of that sentence. Yes, yes. Keep yes. writing. I can't wait to read your next story. Yeah. I'm your biggest fan. And it's like, wow, <laughs> okay, I, I could write that. Like the kid that receives that's gonna be like, I'm adding that full stop and I'm writing something tomorrow. And I'm gonna keep yeah, I'm gonna keep okay. writing because Absolutely. that is so powerful that is so yeah. powerful and you don't get that normally you just don't get that experience at such a young age I mean a lot of people don't get that unless you're in a creative writing program like you probably Absolutely. went through and right. had you know some kind of a group a writing group or right. whatever but this is amazing and yeah. kids deserve to hear and feel that about their own absolutely. ideas and writing absolutely and you know that's where you get those transformations that's where you get a kid you know where we hear from parents who would scream and cry and hate hate mm. the idea of writing and they start using night secure because they've been told it's a game and right. there's enthusiasm around it and before you know it they're yeah. not they're not even worried about the the game aspect. So Night Zuba has a sort of a, a gamified mm-hmm. curriculum and some yep, of them yep. we call them challenges and they're the closest to kind of like your your, your kind of classic interactive challenge where you're like dragging and dropping work or you're learning new pieces of vocabulary and all, all that stuff is is there and, mm-hmm. and it follows you know the classic like in the in the uk that's the called the national curriculum and in america you know you have your common core and, and yep. there's the international baccalaureate you know the the interactive challenges and games on night zookeeper that sort of as i say you kind of expect from digital products now they're all there mm-hmm. and kids when they first join they kind of want to play those they want to be in the bit which kind of looks more gamey sure but the kids they all kind of reach this point where they realize the real fun of night zookeeper is taking all the stuff that they've been learning in those games and producing the writing and then getting those comments and feeling like they've got a no idea a new idea for a story that they really want to tell and they want yes. people to be able to read that story so they're going to write it on night zookeeper they yes. write that idea that they've had for a story and that's where you get the that's where when i said that thing about like the authors of tomorrow like that is what's happening like literally right. that is what's happening and like, it they're sounds all... like they're authors of today too because they're yeah. getting well, them basically essentially published if they want to right well, well, they are, they are. They're published. Yeah. well and uh, it's just another little segue actually a nice one that so i still write the night zookeeper books and i write them with the community so i come up with sort of general themes of the stories and i have a plot and i kind of know where i want the stories to go but yeah. then I come up with a whole bunch of questions and I put them onto the website. So kids come up with characters, they come up with mm-hmm. jokes, plot points, locations, and they write these. Again, it's a reason to write. They write this stuff onto yes. the website and, and the best ideas, you know, we credit the, credit the kids in the books. I've even done book signings where I've been sat next to kids who have contributed towards the, the story. So um, awesome. So that, yeah, they can, not only can they get themselves published, but they can be published, published if they can. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's so awesome. Yeah. I was just going to ask too. So you mentioned you, so you have these books and that's, that was really the inspiration for the, this whole program. Is it important for 
of the families to get the books as well and make sure they read those before they start the program? I mean, I, I'm I'm obviously very biased to the, <laughs> to the books, but no, no, you absolutely don't. The, the story is baked into the website. You know, you're going to meet the characters. You're going to go on an adventure. Yeah, and, yeah. But it's all very self-contained. But if you've got a kid that struggles with reading and writing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and of course I'm a I'm I'm a big book person, as my overcrowded shelves at home will attest. You know, I think there's something very magical about a kid holding a book, Absolutely. and I think that it's it is a great way to complement the learning. So yeah, members of people who sign up to Night Switch Keeper get a pretty decent discount as well on, on getting okay. those books. And that's awesome. It is. You're right. There is something cool about having a physical book these days, you know, especially on yeah. a, with the digital, there's everything's digital, including this program. So it's kind of cool to make it tangible for them. There are some kids, I, especially younger so. kids who really, that makes it feel real. I, I agree. And I, I think that it's, it's yours, you know, when there's yeah. a physical book, yeah. you take that extra care. There's something, you know, and this is something that I think that the world will, will find its balance between mm-hmm what digital enables and what the physical is so natural to us as physical beings and i feel like night zookeeper is a great example of where i think we're adding value to traditional offline play where you know the kid can sit and paint a picture of an animal and then take onto the website if they want they can write absolutely we we produce monthly resources where you know you can print out put them out and write offline and practice your handwriting and all of aspects are very important in developing writing and again that's all all part of the experience because i think that digital is incredible Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but sometimes it puts us in slight alien positions (laughs) as human beings i mean i still think it's it's hilarious that the the kids playroom for the last 20 years has been their dad's study (laughs) <laughs> you know that yeah. kind of like yep. go and sit in a dark room in front of a screen like that they should be out <laughs> right, right? They, and we'll, yes. we'll, we'll get we'll get there again like i'm pretty confident that these kind of For hybridized sure. tools that and you know augmented reality and all this kind of stuff is going to mm-hmm. re-enable us to play away from you know screen pure screen based situations yeah. and yeah but in the meantime i think it's about balance and it's about having mm-hmm. if you can sit and read a physical book brilliant if right. you can print out these resources and use phys- you know, physical resources to practice handwriting and do drawings and things on and learn aspects of the program offline then great but then it, yeah we're in a situation where it's silly not to use all the benefits of technology as well Absolutely. And I think the best, the best programs, the best online programs, I think inspire you to do things offline too. And I think that's what your program definitely does. Like you could, you, you would easily be inspired to go paint a picture or go just do some creative playing, like role playing. I mean, you know, all that kind of stuff can, can be inspired from your program. So that is really awesome. Actually, I think that was one of the reasons why I ended up starting the business and taking mm. it as far as I did. We were saying, mm. but I think before we started recording, but like how yeah. it started with a, a my co-founder was a primary school teacher working in schools and he invited me into his school to run the first night zookeeper project. And at lunchtime, having me, you know, lie to the children and saying, I'm a night zookeeper um, yeah. and I look after magical animals. We went out into the playground at lunchtime and all the kids were running around pretending to be night zookeepers and all yeah. magical animals and playing. And it was it was such a moving and compelling experience for me that I was sort of convinced yes. at that point that more kids in the world needed to, to have this opportunity. Absolutely. I, yeah, I'm so excited for everyone who gets this program and can you just let us know how we can find you and how we can sign up? So it's nightzookeeper.com as in nighttime and zookeeper. And you know, from there, there's a, there's a parent page. That's your effect. Effectively, that's the homeschool page where you, you go through and yeah, yes. sign, sign up to the service. There's a free seven day trial to give it a go and see what your kids think. Yeah. So we have a very special link that you need to use and it'll be in our show notes that you can, you can use and it'll give you a huge 50% off an annual subscription, which is awesome. And you still get the seven day trial too. So Wonderful. it seems like a win, 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 win for, for everyone. So Absolutely. thank you yeah, so much, Josh. Great. We really appreciate that you joined us today. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It was really nice to speak to you and uh, yeah, hopefully speak again soon. Definitely. Let's move on to our loving this week LTWs. Yes. All right, Angela, do you want to get started? I would love to. All right, go for it. I have a book to share. 
Yay. Uh, it's a memoir, which nice. <laughs> my favorite genre. Yes. This is called All You Can Ever Know by Re- Rebecca Chung. Mm. Rebecca is an adoptee and she is Korean and she was adopted by a white family. Mm. And so she tells the story of her childhood in that context. And she grew up in a small town. And so mm. she kind of always wondered about herself and her identity. And she was very curious about her birth family. And so she mm. tells about her curiosity about that and just how that affected her growing up. And then as she became an adult, she decided to try and find her birth family. And so she tells that story. It is so well written. She's a writer. So it's super well written, super inspiring. I think if you, if adoption has affected your family, Mm -hmm. especially Uh transracial adoption, Uh I think you would probably love to read this book. But I think even for anybody, like it does, it has not affected my family. But I really, really learned a lot and wow. enjoyed reading this book. It was captivating. I listened on audio wow. and I listened in two days. I mean, I blew <gasps> through it. What? I was just, I wanted to find out what would happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, is she going to find her birth family? What's going to happen? Because I kind of figured that was coming. And so yep, it yep, like yep. kept me interested the whole way through. So I wow. think, I think you should definitely read it. If this is like, if this piques your interest at all, I think you would love it. The fact that you read it in two days, or listened to yeah. it in two days, makes yeah. me think it was definitely well written. Obviously, oh yeah, and yeah. then also the story was just riveting. And then the fact it that it's just real. This really happened, and it really happened. Um, yep. Yeah, it's that's like a, a magical trio there so for sure. That's awesome. Yes, thank you. What are yeah? What are you loving, Marin? Okay, I'm loving some. I'm loving something that is not brand new to probably anybody, but it's an eyeglass store online store. It's, uh, um, and it's called Warby Parker. <laughs> I'm sure you all have heard of it. And maybe you all have glasses from Warby Parker already. I don't know. But I kind of, I never thought I really wanted to try Warby Parker. Number one, we've done online glasses before. And I'm like, well, if we're going to do online glasses, we're going to go the really cheap route, which, you know, there's like Zenny or whatever. So we've done that before. And Or we're just going to get glasses in our real life eyeglass store so we can actually try things on and get the actual fit that we really need. And, you know, I'm sure they're much higher quality. That's what I always thought. (sighs) Enter Warby Parker. You know, like it's, it has been a journey finding glasses for my whole family over the years. Mm -hmm. And we've tried Mm -hmm. so many things, but Warby Parker just kind of happened upon us because they actually have a physical store in our nearby mall well, they now do. yeah no, which know was that. awesome so we okay. just walked past it one day and we're like oh, let's try these on and they are all the frames I mean not kidding you in the whole store I fell in love with I couldn't decide which ones I wanted number one number two they're so cheap I mean I don't want to say cheap like in inex- I didn't what I'm saying is cheap inexpensive they're yeah. actually very high quality and they're awesome and I just couldn't believe it they're even for us out of network for our insurance but because we can get reimbursed some of the way we, you know I just we paid and then sent in receipts and got paid back right away from our insurance which was which was awesome it ended up being cheaper than getting full coverage at another eyeglass store. Any other, like we, I think I looked at three or four other eyeglass stores in the in the area. And even with like full insurance coverage, Warby Parker was so much cheaper, so wow. much cheaper. That's amazing. And their customer service is unbeatable. They're so amazing at customer service. Everybody in the store was like became our friends right away (laughs) they just loved us and we loved them and I don't know we just all connected we all have this vibe they just have this vibe and it's just great and they gave us great feedback on what what we should look for in glasses for our you know for our face shape and things like that and so it was just fun it was actually just like a fun experience which I have not had before with my family and finding eyeglasses that's awesome that is so awesome yeah would you would you only recommend it going into the store or now that you've done it that's a good question online well and I know that when you do it online they do send you like five pairs of glasses that you can actually try on yeah and 
So, which is great. I think that's yeah. also a viable option for sure. For yeah, sure. you yep. can totally do that. And I would say the other thing is that they make the glasses and send them to you so quickly too. So if you need oh, glasses yeah. quickly, they're, yeah. they never, I, don't, I think they don't like maybe guarantee that they'll come really fast, but ours came really fast. Okay. And then also they have like lots of different lenses that often are super expensive when you upgrade lenses, especially with like the blue blocking material that yes. protects your eyes from the screens and stuff like that. Like that can be hundreds of dollars other places. And it's just, just so affordable. It's <laughs> so affordable at where we park. I just can't believe it. Like I, thought, I can't believe I that either. I, I, yeah. I feel like I hit the jackpot. I'm just so, so excited. Well, I'm really <laughs> glad to have a real world. What's the word? <laughs> endorsement. Endorsement. Uh, yes. A real world endorsement because I have oh. of course heard of them on, on podcasts, yeah. but those are like ads. So you just, you know. <laughs> This is it's not like, an ad, by the way. This is not, not an ad. ad. I'm just telling and you. And I, I always, I always, I've stayed away from Morby Parker because I thought it would be more expensive. So I'm glad to hear yep. it's actually not. It's actually really not, really yep. not. And okay. yeah, yep. So I'm super excited to even get more now. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. All right. So thank you everybody for listening. And we want to say a special thank you to our three sponsors, Blossom and Root, Out School, and Night Zoo- Zookeeper. Be sure to check out all their links and coupon codes and stuff in our show, show notes. This podcast is created and hosted by Angela Sizer and Maren Gorse. We are listener supported to get extra content and the back to school summit free with your membership. Go to patreon.com slash homeschool unrefined. Subscribe to our newsletter and get our free top 100 inclusive book list at homeschool unrefined.com slash newsletter. You can find Marin on Instagram at Unrefined Marin and at Always Learning with Marin. Find Angela at Unrefined Angela. Mm-hmm.